My name is Christopher John Everly. I am the proprietor of Wild Pit Comics 2 in Kenworth, New Jersey. We are acting as regional hosts for 24-Hour Comic Day. During 24-Hour Comic Day, up-and-coming artists will attempt to craft a 24-page comic in 24 hours. Sorry, I was staring at your bow tie. Let's rewind. Up-and-coming artists will attempt to craft a 24-page comic in 24 hours. 24 hours? Why, that's just insane! I'm Scott, Scott McLeod. I've been making uh, comics since 1984, and uh, I created the 24-hour comic back in 1990. The 24-hour comic was a challenge that I concocted back in 1990, was it? 90. Uh, it's a challenge to my friend Steve Bissett, who was really, really slow. We called it Steve Glacier Bissett in those days. Um, I was the second slowest artist in comics, though. So um, I had seen him do some really fast sketches at a store signing. I thought, wow, this guy can draw really fast. I bet he could do a comic in 24 hours if he wanted to. And I thought, hey, I'm going to make him do a 24 hour comic. Uh, the 24-hour comic is a challenge to do an entire 24-page comic in 24 hours. Uh, no planning, no preparation. Once your pen hits the paper, it has to come off 24 hours later. Can't even correct your typos. 24 pages in 24 hours. This establishes that Scott McCloud is indeed crazy. But just how crazy is he? I can sit down for pretty much a week of full-time or close to full-time work and just sit down and really get a 22, 24 page script done from start to finish. I average about a page and a half a day. Um, that varies depending on backgrounds. Lack of backgrounds, I'll be a lot faster, of course. So I'm doing about two pages a day right now and you figure 22 page book, uh, about, a little, about, about three weeks, a little less than three weeks. Okay, that's just for anything. Uh, correct. I'm gonna say about a month and a half and it's maybe two and a half weeks of that is gonna be the pencils, the rest of it's gonna be the inks. Most of the Red Star books take, um, take honestly about three months. So on average, a 24 page book normally requires eight weeks to script, pencil and ink. Assuming a normal work week, that's 320 hours per book. This means that the challenge of a 24-hour comic is to do 24 pages is 7.5% of the time normally needed. This means that Scott McCloud is 13.3 times crazier than the average comics profession. You're my friend, Jimmy. Aww. I want to talk to you. Midnight in Kenilworth, New Jersey. The streets are dark and most sane people are safe at home. Inside Wild Pig, the stage is set for the drama that will play out tonight. The director reviews the set one last time. Everything's in place and he gives the green light. It's time to meet the players. The first artist that we're debuting for some reason is Bill. Hey, I'm Bill Ellis. My favorite stuff is from the Vertigo line. Yeah, Lucifer, Sandman, stuff like that. Uh, Oni Press stuff, Blue Monday, Hopeless Savages. Uh, but pretty much just anything with like a fantasy twist or a, a modern day, just fucking cool twist. Next up we have Jimmy, I think. I am Jimmy Lin. I like literary comics, uh, a lot of manga, and of course the occasional bit of silliness. Uh, who influences me in comics? Uh, Koike Koji made the creative team that did Lone Wolf and Cub. Um, the Ostrander, the Ostrander Mandrake team of the 90s Star Spectre run, and of course Tony Harris and James Robinson that did Starman. Last and certainly not least, um, Jamie. I'm James Hatton. Comic influences. Right at the get go, Gary Larson. I like everything from your intellectual stuff, your Neil Gaiman, your Straczynski, your Bendis, to your very goofy, off the wall, random stuff. Common Grounds is very good, as well as even some of the stuff from Ken Zirko, Nights at the Dinner Table. Officially starting now. All right. 12 10. 12 10. 12 10, we begin. 
Okay, Remember to save it. The artists leap into action. And we'll probably like Bill starts designing his characters. Jamie starts a script or a game of Warcraft. Well, Jimmy begins to set up his area. Now, the tone for any timed event can be set in the first few minutes. Bill starts out running, one artist is missing, Jimmy's already behind, and who knows what Jamie's up to. What? <laughs> Repeat snafu number one. <laughs> Infamously at the minute 12.15 of Repeat snafu number one. Significant others join the fray. Bill is joined by Laura Fisher. And with Jamie is Danielle O'Brien, who works at Wild Pig. Poor Jimmy sleeps alone. We Asians love technology. <laughs> it's time for some serious artistic talk. All right, in five minutes, I've officially hit writer's block. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. Finally. Oh, I'm looking specifically at you. I, you I have a big box of Sharpies and flare pens and big oh, pens. Oh, good enough. I've got my cards as well. I have Sharpies and flares and... I brought an extra mouse ball. Any other thing you can think of. My panel wanted to science fiction comic. <laughs> <laughs> abort, abort. <laughs> How big should my paper be? Um, 8 by 11. Isn't it like 10 by 16? And now presenting Danielle. <laughs> All right, Danielle Corsetto. Uh, right now I'm reading like Why the Last Man, I'm, like reading web comics. So I'm really into like Wapsie Square. Like it's by Craig Thompson. So I really like that a lot. Of it. Frank Show, big time, huge influence. But Adam Hughes, like adore his work. And uh, what's the other question? Oh, and what do you do for a living? Uh, uh, right now, I'm looking for a job. <laughs> With everyone and everything in place, nothing stands in the way of productivity except for one thing. <laughs> we are now going on the first official smoke break. Designate 1224. While they smoke, let's talk to Scott. Uh, it's a challenge I came up with for my friend Steve Bissett. So I challenged him to do it. The only way that I could get him to do it, though, is if I agreed to do one myself. So um, we decided that by the end of, I think it was August of that year, that we would, that we would make this pact that each of us would do this thing, this comic in a, in a day. So I started mine on the last day of August because I'm a procrastinator. Um, and, uh, and Steve was mine too also, but then I found out that Steve had put it off. <laughs> and so there I was all alone doing a, a comic in 24 hours. So I thought, my God, this is just crazy. I'm just doing this for no reason. Uh, but I kept going and kept going and I succeeded and then six days later Steve did his and he sent a copy off to a couple of friends of ours including uh, a guy named Dave Sim, Rick Beach, uh, and Neil Gaiman and each of them in turn within the next uh, few months I think it was, uh, oh no I think Neil's might have been my letter, but they all did their own 24 hour comic just for fun and then they told other people. Enough people have tried it since that um, we now have, I think, uh, nearly a thousand of them have been done in the last uh, 14 years or so. Then when the first comic was born, like it would be a last film comic. So the Wild Pig crew is a little rambunctious. Wait. Potato. After a few shenanigans, they settle down. <coughs> I'm now trying to draw a tree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm failing. You can't talk because I can't concentrate. <laughs> A sale runs in the background. Occasionally a customer comes over to see what's happening. Jamie starts explaining 24-hour comics to one person, but the customer wanders off. I'm now giving you the full tour. Now what I'm doing Jamie doesn't notice. You know you gave up on him, right? I gave up on him completely. He can come watch as he wishes. <laughs> we all knew this was going to be the Jamie show, damn it. <laughs> Despite the distractions, the comic books are slowly getting started. Have you started yet? Huh? Yeah. I'm still trying to find out if I have the favorite news. <laughs> well, most of them, anyway. Between everybody except me, you should have enough. Thank you. Jamie doesn't need paper because his comic is electronic. Instead of drawing, he's pulling pictures from the internet and silhouetting. We're going on our first internet search for our first object to steal off of wireless. A picture of a tree. You can't draw a picture of a tree? 
I can't draw a picture of the crap. No, you can't. Oh, that's true. That's true. Bill's comic is entirely by hand, pencil, ink, and lettering. Instead of mouth, Jimmy is scripting his comic and hasn't drawn anything yet. Neither has Danielle Corsetto, who's still cutting her paper. Danielle was late because she drove up from West Virginia where she's going to school. Despite that disadvantage, Danielle insists that her 24 hours started with everyone else. That's as small as they get. I've just got an official word. My panel too looks good. Yeah, that also looks good. Crack. You're on it. You're a fairy. Don't make me tell you open. Thank you. With Laura and Danielle O'Brien, there are now six artists in the store. It's like a big party in Wild Pig. I sneaky like a ninja. For years, people have been coming up to Scott McCloud and saying, these are great, somebody should do a book of them. And I went up to Scott McCloud and said, some of these are great, I want to publish a book of them, and that's all it took. Scott picked his nine favorite. Uh, we got everyone to agree to let them, uh, us use their stories. To celebrate the release of this, we, that's why we created 24-Hour Comics Day. And then to celebrate 24-Hour Comics Day, we did a book with 24 stories that were done on 24-Hour Comics Day, not all of which are technically 24-Hour Comics. In, in the first book, it's mostly downbeat stories, but that's partly I, because it's people doing it alone at home, I think. Well, of course you're morbid. It's, you know, it's four in the morning, no one is around. You really want to go to bed, and you just get to draw this. <laughs> <laughs> and when they did it in groups, there's a lot more upbeat and a lot of fun stuff. A lot of appearances by Abraham Lincoln for some reason. Now, some of the later ones, I know that on 24 Hour Comics Day, because of the communal aspect of it, I think some of them were a little brighter, a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. Be people, people were having fun, sharing fun, and I think people were coming to it for, di for different reasons yeah. as well. Well, I did mine on the official 24 Hour Comic Book Day at uh, Lone Star Comics in Arlington, Texas. Yeah, I did this at home completely alone. Just like, I have to have the music off and be completely undistracted to be able to actually draw because drawing itself is a pain for me. Doing it by yourself is kind of, can be kind of depressing and aggravating because you're all alone, and especially when it gets to be 2 o'clock in the morning and you've been working for the past 20 hours. My good friend uh, Judd, who runs Earth 2 Comics in Sherman Oaks, California. Earth 2 Comics. Earth 2 Comics. Earth 2. Uh, let me know that he was hosting a 24-hour comics day celebration and that there were going to be as many people as wanted to participate invited to his shop for a 24 hour period on the 24th. There were like, there were like 12 of us uh, packed into that tiny little store and uh, uh, they basically worked for 24 hours eating uh, bad straight. pizza and bad, bad Chinese, Chinese food, food but <laughs> it powered us, <laughs> yeah. you know, definitely. It was right. a lot of fun. A lot of caffeine. I kind of like doing it on my, on my own, it's kind of like a... Uh, I kind of just sit in a room, work for 24 hours, and then it's done. So I, I don't. I think I'd get distracted if I was doing a whole bunch of people. We uh, got in a room with about 16 people in the back of a comic store, with the understanding that as people came in, the comic store would be open for 24 hours, and people would be able to come in and see us work and experience the 24-hour comic with us. And Brad just threw down. I mean, it was a party. <coughs> there was 45 creators. There were like. 100 people in and out. Um, Brad would print us out reference for anything we needed. Like, I got pictures of hamsters, burned out cars, trailer parks, you know, whatever. I just told him. He went and got it. Breakfast burritos. I mean, it was just like it was a completely <laughs> conducive environment. We ran a sale while it was going on. So we had all sorts of people walking in and out. 